So you have made a basic distinction between the knowing and thinking, and this query is about that distinction. When I experience a gut knowing, thought thereafter, the thinking mind tries to process it to understand and integrate it. This is probably appropriate, but surely condition likes and dislikes, etc., can color that process. Heaven forbid. <laughs> this, this is the territory of God told George Bush to go to war in Iraq. <laughs> I'm going to have a talk with George Bush. <laughs> I have faith that the triple gem and the eightfold path would protect the thinking mind from such harmful states. But is that a wise reflection? So that the thinking mind, that, that's what I, I'm trying to convey is, you know, the difference between a thinking mind and intuitive awareness. Now this is a, so I mean, we, you know, one is, is conditioned to think. So this is the problem we have, we think. We're thinking creatures. And that thinking is, is not, not really a problem, but it's attachment to thinking. And so we, we try to understand through thinking, then therefore we lose touch with intuition. So, and then the, the society we live in is uh, one that educates us to think. So I look back on my life and, uh, you know, it was, intuition was never encouraged. It was always to be, you know, something that uh, is a bit, you know, it, and people generally think, that, but women's intuition means, you know, they just feel things in a strange way. <laughs> 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 and men, we don't have intuition. <laughs> None. <laughs> But also, uh, you know, this, this sense of, um, with the thinking mind, you know, we, the problems we have are all about thinking. You know, the war in Iraq, George Bush, everything else is, you know, the divisions of Palestinians, Israelis, the Shiites, Sunnis, the uh, Tories and Labour, and all the rest, the the conflicts that arise between men and women, or whatever, this is all due to thinking and identity. So that now the thinking process is a critical function. So you know when when we're attached to thinking, then we we you know we have we develop <coughs> reason, logic. We we can compare one thing with another and which is bigger and which is smaller. Uh, we, we have, you know, this is a man, this is a woman, this is red, this is blue. And then we have preferences. We like maybe blue better than red. And so we, and somebody likes red better than blue. So then when you want to paint the walls, You have a battle over which color. 
and and, and everyone can b- fully believe that their their choice is the best one. <coughs> I have better taste than you do, and we can believe, you know, believe all our thoughts. So that's why it, you know, in pointing out that listening to yourself think. This is when when we're just caught in thought. We don't listen to our thoughts. We just we can just rattle on and 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 uh, one thought goes on to another, and then we we see things always uh, in their qualities and in, in our preferences, our emotional biases, and so then we experience life through emotion, and you know so that praise is makes us happy, blame makes us angry, success makes us feel good, failure makes us feel terrible. <coughs> and and this is, the I point out, this dualism. This dualism is, uh, you know, is a linear process. Thinking is a linear process. You can't have two thoughts at the same moment. You've got to think one first, then the other. One word, you say, I am you can't say I am at the same moment. You go, I'm moved. <laughs> <laughs> I become intelligible. <laughs> I mean, this is obvious, <laughs> but it's not noticed, is it? I mean, uh, that when we're caught in that linear process <coughs> of our thoughts, then then we, you know, we're we're stuck on that, uh, you know heaven, hell, right, wrong. <coughs> and they seem opposed to each other. Like heaven is obviously better than hell. And hell isn't any good at all. So let's try to just create heaven and get rid of hell. There's a kind of logic there, isn't there? <laughs> it's like genocide or all these things. They're quite logical. You know, you just if you've got an ethnic group in your country that annoys you, just get rid of them. <laughs> 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 but the uh, uh, there's a kind of logic to that, and but it's you know it's um, you know we think, of, but that is because we're stuck in this the dualistic function of our mind, and yet that our intuition. There's always a feeling there's something, no matter how intelligent we might be and how clever our minds may be on that level, there's something missing. Because it leaves you in a state of doubt, uncertainty, or you try to fix, you try to force everybody to to agree with you. You become a tyrant or you, you know, you, you form strong opinions and condemn anyone who doesn't agree. You know, if you're trying to to dominate with your with my particular view of of righteousness, so then you you know then you can the people that don't agree with me are heretics. So heretics, <coughs> if you've got heretics, and we and they, I'm here. My duty as a Buddhist monk. And, and head monk of this monastery is to preserve the purity of Buddhism at all costs. So then if we've got heretics in this room, <laughs> <laughs> we've got to exterminate them. <laughs> <laughs> so like like the religious purity, you know, the the purity of Buddhism, we can get on a, on a very righteous you know, high horse, you know. I'm here to protect the purity of Buddhism, wave the flag. And then, and that's a very righteous thing. I, I love Buddhism and I'm going to protect it. And anyone that, uh, you know, threatens it in any way, we've got to destroy. So then, and this is what, you know, ri- religions oftentimes, when we grasp a religious convention, uh, and we don't, 
we don't understand ourselves at all, but we're caught in in a particular religious convention attachment to it, then we we can uh, commit atrocious acts in the name of God or righteousness, protecting the purity. So I kill a lot of people to protect the purity of Buddhism. <laughs> and there's something not quite right about that. <laughs> So, so this is where the, intu- the intuitive, uh, you know, I, I use this word intuition because, you know, the in moments of our lives, even when we, we aren't aware, we don't even know what's happening, we have intuitive moments. Something in us isn't caught in this dualism and then we, we experience maybe it's a mystical experience or a natural experience, one with nature or things like this, you know, where the the uh, particular grasping tendency of the thinking mind and identity with emotional habits is it kind of packs up for a while. And then you're, you know, you're, you have a, these kind of moments of, of intuitive oneness. So like, like in just the test that checking it out in your own experience. That's why I keep <coughs> advise you to, li- to s- deliberately think, to be able to listen to yourself thinking. You don't even have to think intelligently. You can just think nonsense syllables. But the point is is to deli- intentionally think and listen. So you, you, you are observing, <coughs> you're, you're aware, you know, because the thinking is intentional, it's not just you don't get lost in it. It's it's finite. So you decide what you're going to think, and you think that, but you're listening to it. Now then you question this this listening. This which is aware of the thinking process is non-thinking, and so then you you know you begin to to notice the difference. You know this this awareness includes the thinking, but the thinking comes and goes. So you say, I am Ajahn Sumato, and say, I say that, I am Ajahn Sumato, but the awareness, you know, I- I- is still present after I've thought it, after I've thought that, those three words. So, I- I- and this is, the, the, so this 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 intelligence, this intuitive intelligence, isn't thinking, is it? It's it's uh, it, but it's intelligent. It's discerning. So you begin to 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 notice the, the distinction between thinking and intuitive uh, uh, intuition, like the the uh, thinking process. Uh, you know, we develop intelligent, discriminative intelligence. So we discriminate. Now, this is we 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 put give names to things, and we we have values and principles and ideals, and so we, you know, and we have you know this this range of from A to Z and and the best and the worst. This is all thinking. This isn't intuitive. And then this is also, you know, cultural. What the values that that I have from my cultural conditioning would, might be different than yours. You know, so they have different emphasis in cultures. They have different emphasis. Like in Thailand, they emphasize so much uh, generosity as a kind of cultural. Um, Kind of foundation for for living. Now in the in the states they didn't emphasize generosity. <laughs> <laughs> they emphasize like um, individuality or or freedom things like this. You know, r- human rights, 
my rights, my freedom, my life. So, I mean, this is, and you say, well, which is the best and, 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 and that this is a matter of opinion again. You know, and in and, and the conditioned realm, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. You know, so it's not just one is totally, uh, you know, right and the other totally wrong, or one is absolutely the best and the other is kind of inferior. This is, th- we might have views or opinions about which is the best, but that's thinking again. And questioning. What is, when you ask yourself a question, you know, what, uh, where is my umbrella? Mm-hmm. You know, if you just, now you deliberately ask yourself, listening to yourself asking mm-hmm. a question. And you notice that a question leaves your mind in a state. Uh, there's a pause there, you know, before you try to answer the question. And so the thinking mind is, is you know, it's a, it's a function, a cultivated condition function that we experience through consciousness. But we, when we're attached to it, then we think, think, think our way into everything. Well, so I get totally confused. Some of you complain a lot about confusion during this retreat. <laughs> and uh, understandable. <laughs> because you're trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> and you'll only get confused. So... Uh, you know, so then you, and then then you, uh, and you think, what did the Dalai Lama say, or what did the um, some other monk say, um, and then you compare, but you're still caught in that that level. Now, what I'm trying to do in this retreat is get you to really observe, to to put your not not to, I'm not against thinking, but but to to really become more clear on the what thinking is as a function as experience <coughs> and how it affects our us so you know if i think positively i think um you know in a positive way i have positive uh the power of positive thinking you know where you just Reinforce every moment with a positive thought uh, about love and goodness and and kindness and 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 say inspired inspired thoughts that are you know, that lift us up. Now, now, if you keep reiterating positive thoughts, you feel happy. You know, if you just keep keep at it till the the negativity or anything else kind of gets totally suppressed, you can you can get yourself into a very blissful state because that uh, positive thinking uh, is happiness. It makes you feel happy, and then uh, then think uh, negative thoughts. Life is no good. I'm no good. The world is no good. George Bush is no good. <laughs> God is no good. <laughs> it's all a, everybody's selfish and mean, and it's all going to end in a terrible kind of economic and ecological collapse in a few days, <laughs> and the an oil crisis in the ozone layer, and the and the uh, climate change. And everything, then you get depressed, <laughs> and and so like like what is depression? When you get stuck in negativity, you get you're so attached that, and when it w- like wh- when when uh, like when you're in hell, hell always seems forever. You know when you're suffering, when life is miserable, and there's no hope. And all seems like a total waste, 
that seems like it's it's going to last forever. It seems like an eternity. Where when you're happy, you know, happiness, and you're really happy in love and and, and life is magnificent. Notice how quickly time passes. <laughs> 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 just five hours is just like snap snap of your fingers. Uh, and and then five minutes of pain in your legs waiting for the bell to ring is like five <laughs> hours. <laughs> well that's emotional, isn't it? You know, like like heaven heaven is is what we like, what we want, and 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 so when we are experiencing heaven, it seems to to go very quickly, and then um, the, the, the other is it seems to last forever. Now this is just observing, you know, how how negative when you're caught in a negative state and when you're depressed, you ha- see no way out. It just seems. I'm lost in this hell realm forevermore. There's no possibility of ever getting out of this. And then when you're in heaven, you think, oh, I wish I could stay this way forever, and then it's gone. <laughs> so uh, so that's, that's because those are extremes, heaven and hell, just using those terminologies as the, the very best thing you can think of is heaven, the very worst thing you can possibly think of is hell. So that gives you the the two extremes. And then uh, and so then we we notice like right and wrong. We if very righteous people have very strong views. And uh, you know about this is right, the Buddha said this, God told me to evade Iraq, I'm right. God is right. You can't question God's reason. You say, if God told you to go to Iraq, it's not very good advice. And they say, heretic. (laughs) 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 Because God stands for everything that's right. You know, God can't make a mistake. And, uh, I mean, so that's, that's a concept, though, isn't it? Where, where God, you know, says, George, uh, <laughs> go invade Iraq. And we've got to do it if God says so. But then, but then, uh, 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 with an intuition, intuitive, you know, this, you know, the, the, you, you know, even if such a, a thing happens, you, you know, you're you're not so you're not you're not. Caught in the de- in the delusion, God told the Yorkshire Ripper to go and murder all the prostitutes. So, God gives some pretty rotten advice. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a skeptical mind, you're not so willing to, to, to believe those things. But, but a believing mind, isn't it? A, a mind that never questions or investigates anything is, uh, is uh, you know, will act on, on, on uh, the kind of demonic uh, messages they're getting. So it's like you, you have no perspective, you're just caught in, the, in this samsaric realm. The, and so this this word sangsara means this. It's a, it's an artificial realm of attachment to conditioning, and 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 if you, and how do you get out of that attachment? Is by observing it, knowing what conditioning is and the attachment that one has to it. And this is uh, like uh, in the Four Noble Truths, the uh, dukkha, suffering, suffering uh, as a noble truth, an attachment to suffering. Attachment to desire, out of ignorance, is the cause of suffering. So the whole thing is to, uh, you know, understand suffering, let go of the attachment, realize the cessation, and cultivate the way of non-suffering, which is the way of mindfulness. So, if you, you know, if you uh, see this, no. 
you know, and so you you're discerning. What I'm asking you, you to develop is discernment, which you can't figure out. You know, it's not a thinking process, but it's 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 recognizing a natural state that's with us, but we don't notice. We not do it. It's not developed in us. It's not even suggested in, in our societies. So discernment knows, you know, it's not, discernment isn't critical, it knows that uh, uh, it can recognize attachment and non-attachment. Uh, discerning the difference between attachment to a view of self and, and no self. Discerning the space in this room from the form. It's as simple as that. Discerning um, thoughts. You know, not not. You're, so you're not you're not thinking about thinking, but discerning. This thinking is like this. Non-thinking is like this. So it's like in the in the say I am Ajahn Sumato sequence, three words. Before you decide, to, before I before I decide to think, I. I'm discerning that there's no thought there. There's a there's a space. And then I think I, and then there's another space. I wait, you know, I do it. I don't, I'm not uh, going to, I'm on a tomato, I'm on a tomato, but take your time, you know, I, you're discerning how the thought, you create the thought, you d this is a, you know, not particularly uh, controversial thought, very conventional, you know, everybody calls me Ajahn Tomato, so I think I'm Ajahn Tomato. <laughs> 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 so, I, and then there's a, now there's discernment there, there's a discerning of no thought. Now that's intelligent, isn't it? But it isn't a, a thinking process, it's just noticing. And then am, and then, then the gap there. Discerning the, the, when the thought is present, when it's absent, tomato, so forth. So this is um, so you're you're and, and this sounds very simple, you know, and it is. But but when you try to think about it, you 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 don't get anywhere. You just get confused, and that's why it's it's. Uh, I'm asking you to to you know. And it's the use of awareness or mindfulness, sati sampachanya. This is what it's all about. So, like listening, you know, when listening, I can listen to myself think. I can listen to you talking. I can listen to the sound of the birds in the trees, the rain falling on the roof. I can listen. Uh, you know, uh, to a, a particular s note in, in or a sound or or a song or something, or I can just listen. And so, you know, listening then is this because this is a natural. This is this is natural. I don't create listening. It's not something that I create with thoughts. It's it's a natural function, part of the human condition. So there's sound, we have the ear and the ability to hear a sound. And so behind all the sound is this sound of silence. And that's the oxymoron, sound of silence. Or whatever it is, it's there. Before, and it sounds the rise and cease in this. You know, say, I, and this is discerning. This is a discerning ability. And this is what I call intuitive awareness. 
then then uh, the sense of my so- personality they get into the three fetters first three fetters sakyaditi is yeah, it means personality view well and discerning my the personality is I am Arjun Samedo, I am a Buddhist monk, abbot of Amravati Monastery, and uh, 40, 40 years in the monastic life, and on and on like this. And, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm uh, uh, born under the sign of Leo in the year of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, thinking I'm a, I'm a nice guy, <laughs> or, or people think I'm a nice guy, but I'm not really. <laughs> and then, or I'm a nice guy sometimes. If you praise me, I can be very nice. <laughs> then, uh, or you know, just thinking about my past. About I was uh, born in the United States, and my mother, father, uh, my went to this school, this university, and so forth. This is, this is memory, isn't it? And, and you create a sense of a, of a person, a personality. And the, like with astrology, we think Leos are like this, you know. So, you know, I, one time the, the astrologer was, uh, they had my rising sign different. They thought it was Libra. So I identified with every Libran quality, and then I found out it wasn't, it was Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found myself seeing all these Scorpio things in me. So, I mean, <laughs> what, what is this about? You know, it's, it's, it's thinking, it's, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. And, and the, but when I see myself as a person, and I limit myself to personality, then I suffer a lot. Because as a person, you know, I feel very insecure because it is an unstable state. Personality has no, can't sustain itself. You have to really hold to illusions and and your person, my personality changes all the time from, you know, to what's happening. The way I'm feeling physically or or the weather, or whether people are praising me or blaming me, you know. So this is discerning, isn't it? This is what mindfulness is, Sati Sampachan. You're observing the way your the sense of your self worth as a person changes according to who you're with or the time of the day or whether you're eating or or whatever's happening. Your person, the personality adapts itself to to the condition, and yet I used to have the illusion I am the same person continuously. That's an illusion. When you really observe what is personality, is is uh, is something that arises and ceases. And this discerning ability isn't personal. It's not. It has no name. It has no no uh, quality, you know that that uh, that you can that you can find. But it's empty. It's non-personal, but it's intelligent. It's discerning. This is where wisdom operates from this point. So <coughs> you can go to the university and get a PhD in philosophy. And know what every wise sage ever said, and still not be wise. <laughs> so it's not a matter of quoting Confucius, <laughs> uh, because you know any you know a lot of unwise people quote Confucius. So just trying to emphasize and 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 the. Uh, like in uh, Satipatthana, the four foundations of mindfulness, you can. These are <coughs> these are not to be analyzed with your intellect. You know, they're 
there are skillful means to for awareness. So Gayanupasana, Vedanupasana, Jitanupasana, Tamanupasana, these eight, four stages, these are these are words, these are structures, you know, four, one, two, three, four, and then they emphasize the body, the feeling, the state of mind and Dhamma. So but these are just skillful means to get to 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 investigate experience, to observe and discern. They're not positions to take or or things to be- or can or doctrines to believe in. Now, investigating uh, con- now the consciousness, you know, is um, here and now. You don't create consciousness. It's not created with thoughts. Thoughts come and go in consciousness. So you, so you th- we we call it, you know we name it consciousness. It doesn't have any name. Uh, but in order to point to it, you call it consciousness. And and modern psychology doesn't you know is, it doesn't really understand consciousness very well. <coughs> they have all kinds of arguments about what consciousness is. So, but but so y- you don't need to to uh, question consciousness. Just recognize it. Because uh, you know, if I, go, I used to you know when I started out, I wanted to vinyana is the Pali word, and and then look it up in the Pali dictionary. What does the Pali dictionary define consciousness as being, and and the Etymology of conscious of the word vinyana and the English word consciousness and what does the Oxford Dictionary <laughs> get more and more confused? You know, because consciousness is you know, I'm 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 con- consciousness is this. So it's, it's, you know, the more you try to figure it out and define it, the 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 further away you are from it, you know, you just so uh, you you're trying to figure something out that that you don't need to figure out because you are this. This is the way it is. So this is like in this awakening, you know, waking up. The buto is waking up. You know, it's a real attentiveness. Like somebody is uh, saying that I. This is a passive state of just watching things come and go. But this is not passive. I don't just sit here and watch everything come and go. I'm resigned to just <laughs> putting up with with a frantic mind. Comes and goes. And <laughs> no, there's a real alertness. You know, attentiveness. Because so much of our sense of effort is based on, you know, getting in there and and sucking it to them, you know, really <laughs> punching the calaces and <laughs> extirpating the impurities, <laughs> uh, and that's that's uh, you know that's something to do, isn't it? That's kind of go for it, man, but. And, you know this this doesn't sound so aggressive, but it's because it's subtle it's it's knowing the difference between awakenness and just uh, you know being having your eyes open but wandering mind wandering all over the place and then I'm awake yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're you know what's he talking about I'm not asleep. <laughs> But and so this is like Buddha. Buddha is is you know it's waking up to the way it is. So it's like we we're conscious, but we can you know consciousness is an enlightenment. It's we we can you know crazy people are conscious. You know they're not unconscious, are they? And they can be screaming and yelling and and seeing ghosts and. And demons, and and they're f- and the, but they're still conscious. But what they're thinking, the kind of things that are going on, are they're attached to. So we can, you know, and we, 
and and cultures, uh, you know, condition us through education, through cultural conditioning, to believe and assume all kinds of things that aren't true. And we're conscious, but we we uh, you know so the the consciousness is being conditioned with ignorance, with a vicha. Well, now with the awakened state, with the awakeness you're actually informing consciousness with panya, with wisdom. You know, so you, this is, to to get this, this distinction clear, this, this is, this is intuitive awareness. This is sati sampachanya, sati panya. Thinking is like this. I'm aware of thinking. Thinking can't be aware of intuition. So, you ca- that's why you can't think your way. You can't figure it out. When you try to figure out this, then you just get confused. Ajahn Chah says, your head bursts open. So when you try to figure out anatta, your, your brain will burst. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so... And this uh, then is, uh, you know, it's a very simple, so it's not, not, not something, you know, you have to study in a book or, 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 uh, or we have ideas we, we're not ready for this yet. We need more delusions before we're ready <laughs> for awakening. <laughs> now, if we just feed your delusions, and then there'll be a point where you'll have enough delusions to wake up. <laughs> I mean, it's absurd, isn't it? When, when you really, uh, when you really observe. So, just trying to to reinforce delusion is not compassionate. And um, so, the the compassion is 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 a, is a awakening, trying to uh, encourage. You know, what I can do is encourage it. I can't make you do it. And and also to uh, so many uh, people because of the way we think and we b- what we believe we are we see ourselves oftentimes in very negative ways. So we we believe our negative uh, thoughts about ourselves. We say, well, I'm you know I'm not ready yet. I'm too. I've got too many desires. I'm. I'm you know I'm just. Uh, ordinary person, you know, and I'm I'm not like you. I, I'm just, uh, you know, made a lot of mistakes, done a lot of bad things, and and I, I, I suffer from depression, and I'm, and I've had terrible traumas in my past, and I can't do it. And then you, can, you know, you can, we can see ourselves always in the, and believe this, you know, that this is true. <coughs> And and I'm not trying to say that's not true. In the in the fact that you know that on that level, you know that that might be true. You know, on the con- on the conventional level, terrible things have happened, uh, and and I'm and my ten I get I have so many problems and I'm so neurotic and frightened. That might be true in one way, but not right, or right but not true. Uh, this, uh, this was one of the conundrums Mung Po Cha presented to me. This, you know, at first I didn't quite get it. True but not right, right but not true. And I said, logically, if it's true, it must be right, and if it's right, it must be true. But what does he mean? Uh, but it does like a conundrum doesn't it a conundrum uh, challenges the the assumptions we make like koans in zen and things like that they they kind of challenge it because we are so bound into into assumptions in the thinking process that you know like a koan is 
is a thought that you can't figure out. You can't, you can't, there's no answer to it in the way that we want to answer questions. So every time, no matter how clever you are, you might think, uh, you know, twist your mind around and manipulate your thoughts to get some clever answer. You get hit over the, the, the shoulder with a bamboo stick. <laughs> That's what I hear anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but but koan isn't that those kind of conundrums they they stop the the thinking mind you know suddenly you can't figure it out and that's what the point where you, you you're looking you know what is he trying to say and you're at that point you know you you're not trying to give the answer or solve the problems for you but to to awaken they encourage you to get challenge you in a w- to awaken so i hope that answers your question <laughs> <laughs> In our inner process, is it helpful to first relax into the nature of awareness and then to focus it on the place in our body where there is contraction? Is it then helpful to use that focus to look deeper into the source of the discomfort, like a sense of self-dislike? And then the to contain that feeling in the nature of awareness. Would this be a complete process? Now this is for you to find out. <laughs> 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 so, so the, the, like the uh, <laughs> you know, like like w- w- with awareness, you know, like like they. In the morning, we say, you know, relaxed attention, being aware of the what's happening here and now, the the, the breathing, the posture, of the sitting, and then you know, you know, while you're aware of your body sitting, then you might feel, you know, you, you're aware of it uh, and and of it of its sensation. So you might feel tension in your back or some part of your body. Or pain, tension, contraction. So, so I mean that, and that's where, you know. Th- I used to try to, when I feel tension, I try to get rid of it, the tension. And then I finally r- realized, you know, that that always trying to make my body non-tense wasn't working for me. So I began to just you know, just let let the body be what it is. Why should I say I don't want you tense? Uh, you know, and, and then try to to make it follow some idea of what I think it, I would like it to be. Why not just trust the body? Actually, your body knows what to do if you just leave it alone. If you you know if you if you're not trying to make it do what you want or control it or ignore it or despise it or that then you know a body has uh, you know it has it's it's you know it's it's a natural condition and it it it, it has its own intelligence to to know what to do if if you get your own desires out of the way and we usually you know we control our bodies and with desire what we want them to be we uh, vain so we we criticize what we look like, you know. We look in the mirror, and the nose is too big, or too flat, or chin is too too sharp, or not enough, and skin is too pale, and complexion too blotchy. 
and the cosme cosmetic surgery is, uh, you know, you, know, you can make a fortune these days by trying to shorten people's noses or, you know, build up parts that are that are flat and. <laughs> <laughs> inject all kinds of drugs into your lips and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, and what is this? But, you know, I don't like my lips. You know, I want them to be otherwise. I don't like, uh, you know, I want my eyes to look different. I want my nose. I want want my shape to be like, you know, some some ideal shape. And, and is this compassionate or is this kind? You know, it's an endless process of, there's al you can always find something wrong with how you look. You know, if you're going by a, a kind of standard idea of, of, of how physical beauty and, and then, you know, you're never going to live up to that. And so, this is, this is, this is compassion. The mindfulness of the body is compassionate because it's not demanding the body or judging it or comparing it with something else or with high standards, but it's 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 embracing it, so you're fully aware of the contraction, but you're not trying to get rid of it. it you know, as you trust, uh, as you trust awareness more and more, the body, the tensions fall away because so much of the tensions in the body are caused through stress, through control, through through uh, you know just habits of forcing, making your body do something, trying to make it into something because. You've, you've got an idea of what it should do. Or you make it do things it it shouldn't be doing, and and push it beyond its limits. And you know, so we are very cruel to our to our own body through vanity and through just willfulness or ign ignoring them, not not recognizing their limitation. So in awareness, we're actually awakening to the to the reality of, of this physical body which is not mine. You know, I can, I can kind of bully it and force it. And when you're this old, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> <coughs> when you're young, you can do a lot of it. You know, these, these athletes, Olymp Olympic athletes, must <laughs> really be cruel to them. <laughs> uh, you know, you're, you're making it, you know, trying to to set the record, you know, so you have to force it, train it, and push it, and you know, that's why they take these uh, these drugs and that to to try to make it, you know, improve it, so you can win the record, uh, give more energy and more strength and all that. Well, what is this? This is all coming out of ignorance, and com and the. Uh, and the personality view, isn't it? I want to be win the win a gold medal at the Olympics, and and so that that this 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 is what is praised a lot. Winning a gold medal at the Olympics, you you can get a lot of praise. You're gonna be a hero, and you'll get you'll be down in the records of you know history. Where if you're just you know, a good athlete that doesn't get any medals to be forgotten. And then what, what we're doing is, is not trying to forget, but to see that all this is really illusion. You know, the, the world we live in, the society we live in, is, 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 is delusion. It's based on ignorance. And, and then if we just, if we continue this, never questioning, never looking into it, then we, we're we just perpetuating, you're just going along with it. So, you know, and uh, we're, we're just trapped in the samsara, in other words. So, then the Buddha said, wake up. So you're, and, and on, on the individual level, that, that seems like, well, the world has so many important issues, so many problems, so many social uh, problems, political problems. There's so many things to do, the inequalities, the, the injustices, the, the, the corruption. We've got to do something about it. 
But no matter how much we get these warning signs, you know, and everybody says we've got to do something about it, it just seems to get worse. You know, so, you know, over all these years, by, you know, 50 years ago, I expected the world to be much better by now. I expected them to have a cure for cancer 50 years ago. We were full, had such faith in the medical science that we knew that medical science would, uh, within a few years, have a cure for cancer and all diseases. And we never heard of HIV AIDS at all then, 50 years ago. So, you know, and then, the, then the, now we've got new diseases we didn't know about then. And maybe that's the way this 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 realm is. You know, it's a changing realm. It's it's you know conditions change, and you can't you can't just get rid of disease and uh, old age and and that. These are part. Of, these are what we learn from. You know, that we awaken to. We learn from them. But it's not a a kind of you know. I'm not saying we shouldn't try to to improve things. But just trying to improve the samsara is going to inevitably be a disappointment because samsara is changing, you know, so it improves and then it doesn't. So, I mean, you can't sustain a kind of progressive improvement and, and, and where it just sustains itself because samsara is not like that. It's, it arises and ceases. So you have an inhalation, it rises. You can't just inhale forever. It reaches a peak and then you can't inhale anymore. That's a peak. You know, the, that's the end of the inhalation. And then the, that conditions the exhalation. That's the pattern of conditioned phenomena. Whether it's the mental or physical or whatever. So, so by recognizing that, then you're not expecting or demanding the impossible from conditioned phenomena. And you're more, so your only way out of that, or being liberated from delusion, is but through awakened attention in the present. And discerning things, like the panya, this Pali word panya, like wisdom, discerning so, uh, and discernment is not critical. So, it's not saying attachment is worse than non-attachment, because then we get back into I shouldn't be attached to anything. In our heart, if they're in our heart, you're not attached to anything. But I'm attached to all kinds of things, so I can never be in our heart. There's logic there too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not about taking sides for non-attachment and emptiness and non-self. But it's, it's the in discerning the relationship in the present with the condition and the unconditioned. Being the un- you can't You can't see or know the unconditioned as an object. You are that. This is, this is what awareness awakens you to this state of pure consciousness before the conditioning takes place. Where the conditioning can arise and cease, you know, so you're, you're, so you're not trying to get rid of the conditioning either, but you're, 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 uh, you recognize you're not any of those conditions anymore, so you, you're not deluding yourself. You're not caught in the realm of delusion. If you are with a dying person, how best can you help that person make the transition? Well, uh, like this also, this you have to trust your intuition. You know, you know, the per- you can't. Doesn't work. It's a person that's open, a Buddhist, uh, an arahant. 
or if they're just uh, ordinary batuchana, unawakened, then you have to just trust the you know your intuition. But encouraging, like uh, you know, I'm not the authority. I think some of you were more aware of this than, than I am. But uh, in terms of dealing with dying people, but uh, you know, dying is uh, a very important uh, event in our lives. <laughs> so, and we're all going to die. And and so, you know, this is this is where. Um, but then, then if you're identified with the body. Then, then you, you know, it w actually, we're not going to die. The body dies. The body was born. That's it. That's what it's supposed to do. It gets born, grows up, reaches its peak, matures, gets old, dies. And and that's what you know for a meditator, for a awakened, we're, we're aware. <coughs> our, our awareness <coughs> is not is no longer binding us to the body so so when the sense of i'm dying isn't isn't it you know it's not the reality the body's dying it's reached its end it's uh you know it's time for it to stop breathing stop being a conscious form you know in itself so but it doesn't consciousness doesn't die the, the particular form in consciousness dies, just like <coughs> your feelings arise and cease in your consciousness. But every time a thought arises and ceases or an emotion, there's still consciousness. You're not unconscious after each thought. At least I'm not. <coughs> you know, it'd be interesting if you can't. You know. <laughs> So, uh, you know, encouraging people to to awaken and to and and when it's time to die, to encourage them to die. Yeah. Then you might be, uh, then you might feel guilty, like you killed them. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it's not it's not a formula you I advise you to follow every everybody, but it's it's where you you know you have to trust your intuitive sense of. You know your the relationship with the person, what they're willing to listen to, and and what you can offer. That's more uh, in the in the time and place rather than a prescription. Then uh, if you are the dying pro person, what would you advise? <laughs> I think I've answered that. <laughs> so so like the. I'm quite looking forward to it. Yeah, it's the end, isn't it? And, uh, and you know, it's not something to be frightened of. But if you if you still think you're the body, then probably it is. You know, because if I'm if I'm this body, and that's and I can't imagine being a person without this body. You know, my personality is. And, and if I don't have a body, you know, then what am I? And if the body's dead and rots, you know, decays, then that's me? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a rotten corpse. Uh, <laughs> so the, uh, you know, that's ridiculous, isn't it, when you really explore it. The, uh, the body is like trees and the natural condition, and and it, you know it has its span and it and its and its karmic tendencies that we inherit from our ancestors and who knows from what. But that the, but the conditioned realm, it, we're not trying to figure out because it's so complicated to spend your life trying to figure it all out. It would. You probably would miss the point. So, the, the Buddha was pointing to awakening rather than to trying to figure it all out, because we don't need to know that much. What we need to know 
All we need to know is 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 this discerning ability to see all conditions are impermanent. All dhamma is not self. The sapetama anatan. So these two sentences we chant. You know, I've been chanting those every day for years, forty years now. Sape sangara anicca, sape tama anatana. I keep, you know, and those those have have been a reflection for me for all these years. You know, it doesn't. It isn't a lot to know, is it, on on the terms of intellectual knowledge, but it's it's profound because it's something it's something to you know from intuition rather than just think you understand it because you the words you you understand the words the meaning of the word in fact first the old dhamma is not self sounds you know what does that mean <laughs> that's a you know on the intellectual level and does that make sense And what is not self, you know? Try to think that one out, you know, that as I don't trust it, your head will blow up. Try to, 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 you know, you end up with annihilation. You know, the logic of, of that is uh, there's no self, no soul, no God. Everything's empty. And Nibbana is extinction. And that, you know, logically, that's uh, what annihilation is. The Buddha made it very clear it is not annihilation. So it's it, so this awareness then the path to the deathless, the gate to the deathless. This is the this is this is the 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 gate. This is the the hole in the wall. <laughs> this is the what we recognize where where we we're no longer trapped in the samsara and, and, and so awareness is you know the um, mindfulness passed through the deathless apamado amatapadang in the dhammapada apamado apamado means mindful or heedfulness being attentive is the way to the deathless, amata, deathless padang, deathless way. So, you know, and, and this and then the uh, pamado machuno padang, the second line, heedlessness, not paying attention, is the way to death. So in, in when somebody's dying, if they're heedless, then they, I'm dying, what's going to happen to me when I die? And the fear arises and and you're caught in a turmoil of fear and and dread because you don't know what's going to happen when you're dead. You can't imagine. Tell me, will I go to heaven or will I be reborn? Buddhists believe in reincarnation, and and I've done some pretty rotten things in my life. Will I will, will I have a good birth or not? You know, so all these questions arise: fear and and uh, desire to hold on even to maybe an ancient old body, a diseased body. We can hold on to it. So, uh, just seeing that, that, that that's the, that death is something too, you know, is, 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 is only about sankharas. It's not self. So when you begin to really trust in this awareness, then you're, that's the amata or the deathless. And then, then, the, then the, what's there to fear? Because the, the fear arises out of not knowing. So you, what's going to happen to me when I die? And then you can think of all kinds, anything you can think of. Total oblivion, going to hell, heaven, Purgatory, being reborn as a toad or <laughs> as a devada, whatever. You know, sky's the limit, you know, whatever you want to imagine. You, it might be. But in terms of, of, of intuitive intelligence, you know, it's not that. It's the, the, the death, you, you discern the deathless. 
and the death bound. You know the difference. So you don't attach to death bound out of ignorance. You know, you're not bound into it anymore. So these other two questions will have to wait. 